In we go to game at number four is draft. Gul'dan has been banned. I said I wasn't expecting to see the Gul'dan ban happen, but I'm happy to be wrong. The power of that hero on this map. Also, the power of Vala. When you see a ban like Gul'dan, you have to say, okay, ranged assassins with lane clear. Priority, right? Vala really comes to mind. Multi-shot, super viable. Super viable hero in general. And that's going to give that first pick ETC. Likely going to be the Murad in here. Does this make you prioritize Li Ming this early? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of other heroes with really solid lane clear. Like Fall said, not nah, really. Um, it's hard to say. I don't know if I would go straight for Li Ming myself. I mean, if you don't, you got to imagine no tomorrow will pick that up. And then you kind of... I look at it in the sense is you need some type of poke damage, something to come in. A first pick Morales and a Tychus. That's not not something I see that often. First pick, first rotation Morales for Neventic. All right. Yeah, that's definitely um, not expected, but we do see you know Morales have a lot of prioritization here. Finding the, the flanks on a two-lane map, not as easy as some of the other maps, so that medic will stay safe uh, more often than less. And, of course, Kenma, a big fan of the hero. We'll have to see how the rest of this works out. Probably going to be Odin once more. We've seen 2-8, my hot doggy, doing a lot of the Odin play, especially when you're on the offense, pushing with the Zergs. Uh, I mean, that siege is very, very useful. I, I, the, this is just such a strong pickup. Um, you got to imagine that we'll probably see Muradin banned out again, and it seems like that has kind of been a big factor. Oh, look at this, Dahaka. I like it. I like the Dahaka pickup. We saw great success out of it from Chew Ate My Hot Dogie's team, and that, when you can turn a fight, when you can turn a play, it's a really big deal when you can get that beacon under control. You might give up a little bit of control, but as the game goes on, those death timers come much longer. It's a lot tougher to deal with. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, lot of, a lot of power on that team, though, with the, the global priority that they've already committed to. Like, yeah, dropship does give you some kind of global presence, but it's a lot slower. Like, you've got to turn on the engine, rev it up, <laughs> and then soar across it's the like sky. It's like four seconds before you can take yeah, off? It takes a while. It's like it's like here in, in, in New England in winter. you got to turn your car on. That car is not going anywhere in the dead of winter till it's warmed up. Yeah, no, thank you. Jaina, right, man. Jaina, again. Well, again, they, they see the potential. Like, look, they committed on Warriors. They didn't go for any ranged. They've effectively locked themselves out of the opportunities to grab those big ranged heroes. So if Neventic decide that they want Li Ming, grab it. I, I think that's the perfect pickup because it takes it out of the hands of your opponent. It gives you a strong backliner. Yes, it forces you into tank as Li Ming, but there's not a lot of other options that we see in the current meta that really have that poke potential. Again, on Braxis Holdout, those beacons are what will get you those Zerg waves, and you will contest over those for a very long time early in the game. And if you have that consistent damage, that consistent poke, it allows you to force your team back, or the enemy back just a little bit. So I love the fact that they picked it up. I love the Jaina ban. And now No Tomorrow is going to have to find something to bring that damage from the back line. Yeah, it's going to be tough, too. I'm just trying to think of, like, what's going to work. Yeah, they could go for full-on global life and grab the fall stat if they, uh, if they want that. But Big E likely going to be playing... Oh, excuse me. B-Kid likely going to be playing that Johanna here for an event. Are you surprised? They, I mean, Johanna has the iron skin and can make sure not to get hard CC'd. Muradin can't. But I think a lot of it's, you know, Knight Takes Pawn. Um for just clear and just the safe control well, of the shrines. In. Right. But I'm just saying as like Johanna's pick in general. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a good point. Tychus doesn't have the best wave clear. Li Ming can help when that first wave of Zergs come in. Disintegrate might have to be the choice if they don't pick something up on that second uh, line to really do damage. But you got to think that Tahaka is going to be the solo laner. 
who's going to be that solo laner for Neventic. And right now, I don't think they have that. Hmm. Yeah. It'll be a frontliner. Could be Alarak. Alarak would do fine. Could be Chen. I mean, that's They've the thing. Got options. I think Chen is a good option. Alarak, I think it's those better, are the better, two. Yeah. Uh, Sylv currently being hovered, though. Sylv, of course, you know, you think about the the potential to have the pressing advantage of the, the, the push and does very well, but... That's damage that they need right there. Yep, I agree. Especially with Nature's Calling level 7, you can just burn through those minions. Okay, they are now actually committed. Oh, There we go. I mean, this is what happens when you get restricted in terms of ranged assassins, but let's talk about the the synergies that exist here. Like, ETC, Kael'thas, that's a lot of stun. Roots on top of it, like, if you Verdant Spheres, your, your Gravity Lapse, I mean, that can just turn games around. And he's got AoE. He's got plenty of it. I'm just really curious to see how Kael'thas will be built in this match. I think there's a lot of options available to him. you got to think Man Mana Addict might be the choice to give him a little bit more protection, but right now he's not under a lot of serious threat. It's a lot of backline damage for Neventic. There's so Rexar in. once again. That, okay. So Kael'thas might not have to go Mana Addict. Mana Addict could help, especially when you talk about long, drawn-out fights. There's a lot of globe opportunities mm -hmm. because of that neutral globe that does spawn, and so there's a lot of globe opportunities if he does want to go into that questing talent. I like this uh, Rexar a lot. We talked about Chen, we talked about Alarak, but uh, actually, you know, like we haven't seen Deventic play uh, a whole lot of, of Rexar overall. Yes, we did see Tomster on him uh, the first match of this series, but it makes perfect sense here. Just kind of a, a bit of an overlook on my part there because he is going to do very well versus that to Haka in the top lane. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of potential out of it. Rexar, when you talk about when this map first came out, everybody's like, wait a minute. All of a sudden, Rexar's name started popping up more and more. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the I, I still really like what you mentioned with Chen. I think uh, he's one of the really good, strong solo laners that we have in the game. But Rexar, they seem to be all in it. And uh, again, the point that I was talking about is there's not a lot of threat to, to either team's back line. So Rexar, we'll see. A lot of teams gonna have to prioritize that front line to do some damage. See how he can do in this match. Of uh, the other thing about Rexar is he does have a fair bit of AOE, especially once you get Wildfire uh, Bear thrown in the mix. I mean, Misha does do pretty well on her own. Uh, but uh, we are loading on in to game number four. Neventic still on that point to move on into the next round. We'll see if they can do it. Here on the blue side, Zuna going to be playing the Tychus B-Kit on Johanna Big E on Lee Ming, Kenma playing the Medic, and Tomster on Rexar. Well, we see an early five-man rotation. They know they have a couple of globals available to them. They can look for a fight if they so choose. But it's going to be Talking Trees on Kalthas, Urho on ETC, Jason on Falstad, Tiger, JK on Malfurion, and Dahaka, played by Casanova. Be sure to let us know. Use the hashtag HGC on Twitter who you want to see move forward into the league, guys. And remember, after this, we do have another best of five semifinals between Gale Force and Vox Nahili. Lots more to come. Misha, Rexar already in the top. Falstead will slowly uh, consider moving up there. I do expect it to be Casanova on Dahaka in the top lane, though. Well, you can see a lot of aggression. Again, we see the minion stalling coming out, but Big Impact recognizes that they're not quite there. So Lee Ming, you have a little bit of safe poke, at least for the moment. It's a little bit of early value on those lanes. Yeah, just going to give them the safe soak, as mentioned. And there goes the burrow of Dahaka into the top part of the map, now making sure to maximize the soak in that lane as well. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. We already saw that priority for that globe at the bottom. We're seeing Prague Rock picked up by ETC, and Mana Addict mm -hmm. was the choice for Kel'Thas. After 20, you have a bit of protection there to be able to give yourself a shield, but more importantly, you have extra mana to be able to stay in the fights. So I like the priority rotation there already at a moon tomorrow. The other thing I really like about Mana Addict here is if Kel'Thas can, you know, mana, you know, take control of these globes. Oh my goodness, Biggie! Around the cow! <laughs> Can Gets you curve the, the bullet? Tiger! That was very nicely done. Biggie recognized that he's got to go through there. <laughs> <laughs>
Talking uh, trees. Okay, okay. Well, what I was trying to say is if they can get this gloves bottle, that'll be really good. Nice safeguard onto Zuna. We'll keep him alive. Well done there by Kenma. And now Big E is continuing to pop off, throwing that damage in. Wow. Uh, best single target heals in the game. Lieutenant Morales keeping the team alive so far. Scouting drone also very useful here to like and just keep eyes on. Just gives you all the vision you need in these sections. Great talent for this map. It's about to spawn. There they go. We see Jason going after Big E, and he's not going to get the yeah. value that he wants. Big he committed e. to barrel roll. Uh, okay, they're forced to heal him. They didn't want to overcommit because they were afraid of Erho with the power slide. Just nice reserved play. Casanova getting all that self-heal, but Misha, well, with Men Pet, can sit here for quite a while. Yeah, there it is. It's going to stall this out for the moment. We see now Deventic coming in. The roots are down on a Big E, but more importantly, Talking Trees so low. Once again, Big E, though, taking that fire. And down goes Lee Ming, the one Battle one. of the Mages. But Medic is just too valuable. That grenade from Kenma was so clean. The power slide, though, onto him. Appeals attempted here. The safeguard on himself to try to stay alive. And Zuna nearly getting the kill. Burrow goes in. Condemn pulls him back. And they find the kill. This is going to give 54% and on for the progress of the beacon. Our early team fights. You see that <laughs> we saw Casanova and Dehaka saying, wait a minute, I think I should be good to go in here. There you see, getting onto the point just in time to keep that beacon alive, but flying in is Jason. There's 100% Zerg wave, though, Jake. Really clean start here from Neventic, finding that first kill on Li Ming and then just snowballing it forward with this massive Zerg push. Now, lane clear. Kelthos does do a good job. False said that was a mega value hammering, making sure to cast that before they did, you know, have more of a concave rather than a line. Well done. That'll help them out a lot. Fire is spreading and doing a ton of damage up there against Johanna. You can see the Zerg wave, though, starting to push in towards that fort. The most important part, of course, is that well as it goes down. You can see Big E threatening with that arcane orb in the middle, though. Got to be scared of it. That's for sure. Beacon stepping forward, trying to just force out the variable, force out any kind of retreat. And this fort has fallen. That's going to give level 7 here to the side of Neventic with a level and a half lead. It's a really good early start, Jake. Level 7 already picked up. They've got a level and a half going. Uh-oh. Tomster. Does he have Misha charge? Tomster goes down. That's okay. But that, more importantly, they're giving up this push at the bottom now. I mean, that, that kill, is it worth the front wall of your bottom keep? Now, obviously, the next Zerg wave, depending on how strong it is, will be pushing the top lane. We just gave up possibly some valuable real estate there in the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, actually, the experience trade is probably in favor of Neventic getting that kill when it comes to the kill versus the tower. However, uh, they did lose Soak as a result in the top lane. So it does, it is uh, probably XP wise favorable for No Tomorrow. They're trying to make things happen. You see the camps now being prioritized by both teams. Do we see an invade coming in here, Jig? Looks like it. They're starting on the Bruiser Camp. Zuna has scouted this, the retreat. Well, it's it's a necessity. Level 7 is not here. This is a fight they cannot take safely. Now, level 7 not quite there, so they're not feeling too confident. Jeff yet is Tahaka not there. The threat of Tank is walking in on that front line, man. He went in the rhythm. He's up to 0.87 extra seconds on it. And look at this. They are capturing three of the four camps already. Yeah, looking really, for a pick. Really dominant control. They're also posturing to potentially collapse here in the bottom. Tiger in the front gets pulled into the condemn. Big damage onto him. Will be enough for the kill. Biggie gets a reset, but Kenma is being collapsed upon in the top, and he will be the one to fall. Both the supports are down. Yeah, you saw the roots come down, lock him in there. It was a very tough spot for him to be in. We see the, the burrow there. Is he going to be collapsed upon to Haka? Goes down. All right, Biggie gets the reset. He's looking for the orb. Oh, oh wow. Oh, trees. Talking trees. Making me scared a little bit. <laughs> Big E, very, very threatening right now on that lead make. Okay, well, the Merc Camp did do a good bit of damage here. All the ammunition removed from the towers on the top lane, and we should have the beacons available very soon for the second spawn. Dahaka with the burrow, misses the drag. Misha going to get the charge to save Tomster just barely. Did they collapse too far? The slow is there. Casanova trying to walk away. Misha, do you have a charge? There, there it, is. it is. Nice kill. Can they get another? 
Doesn't look like it. Saw a really good cleanse on the backside there to keep Tankus firing away as he continues to do some serious damage. The pressure is on, Jake. Level 10. It's here. It's here. Okay, disintegrate. Boars. Drill, no Odin. They're looking to really get in the siege in a different way. Single target damage, that really just makes it a lot more uh, risky when it comes to fighting around all of these objectives. This looks like a completely different team. Zuna, very low, but the single the heals. Look at that. That's a dead Tiger. That's a dead Urho. Nope, he's going to get away. I lied. That drill was all over him, and there was absolutely nothing he could do. Li Ming now down at the bottom. Beacon channeling that. We're going to see a camp picked up. Beacon starting to charge. So without heroic abilities and with your healer down, you have no real opportunity to contest. You just need to soak as much as you possibly can, as safely as you possibly can, and hope you don't lose too much structural presence. If they can burn this fort down before the beacons even get here, uh, oh man, that's out. rough. Flame strike coming in, getting really good value. Misha also just um, grabbed a camp. Jason will be able to barrel roll over the wall moments before the charge of Misha does take him out. He actually ended up flying away, fearing for his life. I, I am curious what the call is on Morales holding the heroic stem drone versus potentially medevac, what they might be looking for or whether it's going to be a snap pick waiting for some heroics to come out so they can get value. There's so, the medevac. There it is. Okay, so it is 100% Zerg wave. Top four is down. This is tough, man. This is tough. Level 10. They've still got the... That's, uh, the secret missiles coming out here do a lot of splash, too. And if that's, like, sieged up behind a Zerg line and you can't... I mean, Flame Strike should be able to deal with it. One Flame Strike... Oh, barely misses it, actually. Well, we see the pressure being put on by Neventic. They have the heroics very close on those heroics. There they are, picked up. Look for Phoenix to come out, try and get some zone any bit that they can as it comes out, Jake. Stage dive on the wall. They're looking at B Kid, but Medic has the heals, and Urho has to power slide away. Over the wall is Biggie's damage, nearly getting the kill on trees, but heals coming through. So much self sustain from Casanova on top of it, and they're staying alive. Good defense so far, and they managed to get the kill on Misha. That's a good start. Well, B-Kids spread a little bit of fire over there to Kenma. they got to prevent themselves from hurting each other at this point. The keep is going to stay alive. Biggie on the other side. Jason, though, caught in a bad spot, does go down. Tiger JK uses his Twilight Dream, but did he go too far as Valfurion go down? Talking trees. Kael'thas the next. Dahaka soon to follow. You know, it looked like Jason barrel rolled over the wall and said, I've made a terrible mistake. And then bit. just kind of took his hands off the keyboard and died. <laughs> And now what seemed like a really good defense and good timing to be able to get that heroic. They should have finished that. They're, they're going oh. directly down to the bottom to... Uh, Can you imagine if Misha got left behind and just kind of died? It was bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Nice, nice for Ken, but I'll wait for the bear. <laughs> get to the chapel. All right, look at this. Burning Rage and uh, Misha's version picked up as well with Wildfire Bear. So both looking to do some AoE damage to anything and everything that steps near it. I love the pick. I mean, it's it's the norm in most situations for uh, Rexar in general, but it's going to get so much extra value when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, mercenaries and, of course, the big pushes. I, I, I like this. I'm not sure if this is strategic in the sense that they saw Tomster last time get picked off a little bit, so they saw the rotations up from the globals. They're just preparing for it. Falstad, mm. I'm not, I don't want any part of this. They're being very passive, though. They haven't seen anyone on the side of Neventic for a while, so they do suspect the party bush potential, and they're not going to fall for it. Good uh, patience here. Acknowledging that, you know, 14 to 11, it's pretty hard to take a team fight. It is, and they've got a little bit of a party bush set up of their own, but they got to be careful as they come in. B-Kid already sniffing it out in just a little bit. They're going to clear up the camp. Jake Beacon's going to be active here in 10 seconds. It's up to no tomorrow to make some plays, man. Yeah, it really is. I mean, that top keep is down, and both these forts on the side of Neventic are still extremely healthy. So they have quite the hill to climb. Bottom lane, Johanna did capture. Dahaka, once 
once the Haka gets eyes on Johanna, will sweep in there, grab it. That'll keep the beacon progress from being an issue for a while. But if they lose a the fight, things could change quickly. Well, the Haka's at the bottom. He's channeling the bottom beacon. Only 2% was charged. They are almost simultaneous as they went in, but picking up the camps. These camps will continue to put pressure if they're not cleared up, and that's going to force rotations out from No Tomorrow. I think they're stalling as best that they possibly can to try and get 13. Urho got to be careful not to get caught out, though. Be kidding. Uh, just in a moment too late to be able to get that kingdom. Uh-oh, Urho aggros, aggros the boss, taking a little bit of unnecessary damage. Tiger JK does manage to grab the Hellbats. On the left side, that is a really nice uh, win for them to be able to get some push on this bottom lane. That should be level 13 moments away. See, the thing about this is this is a really good play. They're getting good value out of the camp. They're getting, they don't need to stay there too long. It's going to force a response out of Naventic. And the thing is, Naventic can't just casually rotate over and threaten their keep because the keep is already gone. So you're not going to be threatening core. So there was really no threat outside of just not staying too long for No Tomorrow. So I love the call right there. Yeah. They're playing really well right now. Trying to get a handle on this game is no tomorrow, but the beacon progress has begun. Up to 12%. It ticks so very quickly. If you step away for a moment, you start to lose. Casanova has to burrow. The orb going to fly out the moment it's up. The drill placed aggressively, trying to get some damage. They focus it down, but Misha is in there. Finds the stun. The condemned follow-up. That's a dead Dahaka. Dahaka goes down. Urho, could he be the next to fall? We see the stun. Ooh. Twilight Dream goes in, but not enough as two members are down. The ice Flock is there for Tiger JK, but he is way too far in. And that is three members of No Tomorrow down. Look at this, Jake. So top lane completely pushing with the Merc. 16 around the corner. Beacon progress ticking quickly. And they're going for the boss. This could be the game ending moment. There will be a five man defense, but there will be 16 versus 14 with a boss in 100% Zerg wave versus what, four lings? It, it, it's tough, man. This is really, really tough. We're going to see what they get out of this boss. Well, three lings. Man, look at them go. Boss and a Zerg wave, same lane. What are you going to do about it? It's tough, and it's going to be synced up. Pretty darn well. So here, here they go. And again, this catapult's in the top. Remember right? early that first Zerg wave and I talked about giving up that real estate? And you can see right now, they don't have nearly yeah. anything to go through. I'm not sure if that would have mattered <laughs> at this point. <laughs> right. But it's the little things that happen early in the game that have an impact later. Well, the boss has found the keep, and that keep is going away forever. Well, this almost seems like an impossible task. Noventic, after having a huge hiccup in game number three, the Mighty Gust over to the corner. Let's see if they can get any value. <laughs> they are going in, though. Desperate attempt to get it onto B Kid as quickly as they can, but the heals are there. Two members have fallen. Make it, well, the rest of the team. GG, congratulations to Noventic qualifying for 2017 HGC. Our first team to get in is by far the number one team you would have expected. They got in almost flawlessly. I'm pretty sure that was the only game that they've dropped in the entire tournament for them. And it was just one of those throwaway games, guys. Let's forget it. But congratulations, yeah. Authentic, man. Looked really, 